Hello and welcome back. This is the Fio R7 desktop audio player. Let's do the unboxing. I'm going to talk a bit about everything that's inside. This is one of those desktop players which are more reasonably priced. There have been a number of uh, streaming ready players available in the market but most of them have been in the thousand dollar plus range. This one depending on where you are costs around 700 to 800 dollars depending on where you're buying it. So the FIO came out with a desktop player just when people were like overwhelmed with the different audio components out out of the market like the DAX, the amps, the headphones, just too many things. So the FIO R7 this is for people who just want one integrated ready to use player. So while I try to manage this on my table, bear with me. So the R7 is very unique because it basically is a all-in-one player. It is a high resolution music player with headphone, speakers and streaming support. Sorry, I meant speaker support and headphone support and streaming. Wonderful box. As usual, Fio does a fantastic job of uh, packaging. So you can see the player here. This has the ESS chipset. ESS is the slightly, slightly sharper chipset in terms of uh, resolution. And this has THX audio. This is the amp part. So THX basically give you a super black noise background. So which is basically a very quiet background. So the product itself is very neat, small. It's got all this grill here for ventilation. You can actually see THX right here. I think that's the chipset and a bunch of capacitors. You can also see ESS written here. So this is a great way for Fio to show off the components. I mean, any, any audio file would love to look at all the internals of the uh, product that he has. I can see a bunch of capacitors, some toroidal transformer, power supply, a lot of things. The back is full of connectors and on the front we have the volume knobs. I'll come to that in a minute. So let's take a look at what else is inside the box. Silica gel. Good one. Um, I think most of the box is just packing so I'll get this big one out of the way and what we have left is this small box this probably has the power power cables yep there's a power cable in here that's a 5 amp and the quick start guide honestly speaking I'm not going to read through all of these things but yes if you're not use any of few products or if you're not familiar with desktop players you should check it out and what else oh, it also talks about how to use the stand so, so this is something interesting let me just pull it up so we have a type c usb cable and these are the small stands so when i say stand these are small risers for your player so you can use the player in a flat kind of a profile or you can use it with a slightly raised profile. So let me just get these things out of the way. I think these are rubber feet. We'll check that. There's a fuse. If you blow your amp, if you're connected to speakers and just try to pump up too much volume, you might blow a fuse. There's a converter jack and these are the two stands. Uh, these are sticker feet for the stands. So the stands are rubber and it's made of matte. It's very smooth and nice to hold, very premium. And this is the raised one. So let's take a look at it. So we have two of them. Uh, the camera angle may not help much, but basically one of them is flat and the other one helps you rise or raise the player a little bit. So here we go. This is the flat player. 
Ah. How do I put this in? Yep. Okay. This is the flat player. And sorry, this is the flat feet. This is the slightly raised feet. So to show you a bit of that, what I'm going to do is just pull the camera down a little bit. You can see that this is a slightly more usable angle for the player, right? And if you use the flat feet, it might fit nicely with your speakers. If you have speakers like Edifier or something lying around, you might want to just push this in between and make it look like a nice stereo setup. So two options are the feet. Now let's look into the product itself. I wonder what this is. We'll come back to that. Uh, we'll start with the front of the product. So we have a sticker here. This is the actual display. I'm going to pull it off and this will basically allow you to use the product. And it's got a nice few logo written here and this knob here allows you to select your inputs so this is the pre output this is PO this is line out we'll talk about that in a minute and this is your volume knob it's a typical digital to analog knob it has this rickety feel to that so you can turn it up in steps it goes up by a notch and this front fascia basically hides the connectors so you have a couple of headphone jacks 6mm 4.4mm and so on on the back we have a SD slot I think you can use this to plug in your local media files you have a USB 3 port USB host power and interestingly you have an AC-DC switch here so this switch basically allows you to switch from the internal power supply to something much quieter if you use VO's own external power supplies you can choose to switch over to a DC input instead of using the uh, built-in power supply DC in goes here this is the power switch I haven't plugged it in yet these are the balanced line outs uh, optical out coaxial out and these are the RCA line outs okay so that's it a lot of things and of course you have the LAN connector here so if you are a streamer, you would definitely want to plug in your LAN cable unless you have fast Wi-Fi access in your home. That gives you the uh, best throughput. I guess this is for this small fan that's built into it. I'm not sure of that, but here's a small grill. Looks very neat. And all the usual logos, high-res audio, wireless audio, MQA, yeah, so on. Now let's turn it on. I've got the power supply plugged in and I've lowered the camera a little bit so you get a better angle. So a long press is supposed to turn it on, but it didn't. Okay, there's a power switch in the back and let's give it a try again. Yep. I'm using the slightly raised version of the rubber feet. Uh, it's a nice angle. I have the volume knobs here the selector switch and very nice RGB effects it also indicates the uh, the sampling rate level depending on what audio you're playing uh, it runs Android 10 I think that's pretty decent for most of your uh, players you can run most of your apps like Spotify YouTube music or Amazon music any of those Android 10 is not the latest and greatest but for a music player I think that should be more than enough for a few no few years to come by and this is it it looks like a standard desktop um, very responsive this runs this Snapdragon Dragon 600 series uh, I don't think you would need anything more than this for a music player there's also a few rune built into it if you have a rune server lying around if you have all your local files loaded on that you can use rune I'll go into all the details later but this is basically an unboxing video I'll try to keep it as simple as possible and talk about some of the features so let me just set it up and come back one of the good things of running uh, Android itself is you have access to the Play Store 
and you can also use the applications that come with uh, Fio. Just downloading apps from the App Store, it's quite simple and straightforward. Uh, I'm just putting in YouTube Music just to give you a quick demo of how the uh, screen looks like. It's quite sharp, very usable. Uh, I find this screen keyboard to be a little too tiny for my hands, but I think it's okay for most people, I guess. So you can see that it's very responsive. I've got a bunch of things loaded up. All my previous playlists and my history is shown out here. One of the things about the FIO is that it has multiple modes. There's an Android mode, as you can see here, and there is a music mode, which I'll just be turning on in a minute. You can see here that in the taskbar, you can choose your music mode. You can put it in pure music mode, so you'll get rid of all the Android apps. There's no multitasking. It's just a purely a music player. But right now for today, just for the unboxing, I'm just going to play YouTube music. I'll just plug in a couple of headphones and give you quick impressions on what I think it is. You know what? I had to dip into the quick start guide because it has uh, four output modes. Uh, when you're trying to plug in your headphone, you need to be in a certain mode to get audio out in the headphone jacks. So for example, if you s set the mode selector to pre-out, you're not going to get output on any of your headphone jacks. So PO, which is, I think, power out, if I switch to that, then you're going to get audio on the headphone jacks. So I don't have a big headphone handy. What I have is my favorite IEM, which is the Blessing 2s. I'm going to use that to do a quick listen to some music. I had to use an adapter. This is a very powerful amp, so you need to be careful when you're plugging in sensitive IEMs. So with that said, let me just give it a try. So to begin with, let's just turn down the volume because these are small sensitive IEMs. I'm going to start with a very small number and let you know what works for IEMs. That was a beautiful volume dial. And let me just play something. Well, not that. So I'm just playing a random collection of music. This is Genesis, Follow You, Follow Me. Um, I can actually go all the way higher. On my blessing too, I think this is a good amount of power output that I need. It sounds pretty clear. I've been I've been listening to the iFi Gryphon and this one definitely sounds much more detailed, clear. Uh, I'll not go too much into sound impressions. I would say it's pretty impressive at the moment. I'll have a separate demo to talk about how the sound uh, can be compared to other devices. But otherwise, this is the Fio R7. Hope you enjoyed the unboxing.